This is the brand new Hollyland Mars 4K. And in this video, we're gonna do a thorough test and review, including range. And it wouldn't be one of our videos if we didn't do something a little bit extra. <laughs> flies really well. It's a lot lighter than I expected it to be. Of course, I'm not going to be able to see what kind of range I'm getting, so I'm going to go out here a little further. I'm guessing we've lost signal by now. That's probably 600 feet. So for this, we're actually going to fly through these tight trees and see if it can shoot through like, I don't know, probably 100 feet of thick woods. Ah, that was tight. All right, here we go turn around, change the angle a little. Now these are pretty thick trees, so if it makes it through this, I will be very impressed. And just because, it wouldn't be a test without a power loop. <laughs> oh, it flies so well. All right, let's bring it back and see what that did. You know what's amazing to me? I actually had no interference or anything unusual. I expected to have a little bit of this cutting into my DJI feed. The signal was as good as usual, but I have no idea what happened here, so we're gonna have to see what that looked like in the studio. We'll get to some of the other features of these transmitters in a moment, but first, let's talk about that outdoor range test. We're able to get over 850 feet line of sight without any breakup. The website says they get about 450 feet, which I thought was a little odd, but then I looked in the manual, which, you know, we should do more often, and it says they actually get a thousand feet line of sight. So I don't know if there's a little bit of a discrepancy there or if they're just being a little more modest in their listing online and I actually kind of appreciate that. So the range is pretty solid. Now, when we got into the trees, we actually got around 300 feet before we lost it, but that was a wooded area with large oak trees and maple trees, and there was a lot blocking this signal. It also came back pretty quickly once it returned, which was nice. I didn't have to get it back, set it close beside it for the signal to return. So overall, the outdoor range test is pretty solid. However, I would not actually use this for an FPV drone or a Cinelifter. That was just a fun way to try it out. Next, let's do an indoor test and see how they hold up in that environment. We're here at Gracefully Adorn's wedding venue, and we're gonna see how many walls we can get through before we drop a signal. I'm guessing two or three. The first one's actually a firewall, so it's pretty thick, but let's see how well this thing does. So starting off, this screen is crystal clear. Everything looks great, but let's go ahead and go a little further. That is wall one, wall two, the steel door, firewall. You know what? Let's shut the door behind it. There we go. That makes it a little tougher. So that's a steel door and a firewall. Now we are in the reception room through another wall and still no signal dropout. That is pretty impressive. Oh, we're also gonna be reviewing this monitor. It has a built-in NPF power supply, which is pretty sweet and makes this a really nice compact setup. All right, still no stutters. And then we have another wall we're gonna go through. That is four layers and no signal dropout whatsoever. Let's go like hide behind this cabinet and see how that does. Still nothing. It's still not dropping out. So that's pretty impressive for an indoor test. We went through multiple walls, one of which was a firewall, which has several layers of thick drywall and insulation and everything else. And we did not lose signal indoors. I think for most cases, it's gonna work because usually whoever is monitoring or pulling focus is only one or two walls away. So these work pretty great indoors. So next up, we're gonna test out the Hollyview app to see what kind of range it gets in the same exact setting. Again, the image is really clear. It's actually pretty impressive. But this being a Wi-Fi signal, I doubt it's going to work nearly as well or go nearly as far. But we'll do the same thing. Go ahead and shut this heavy door through the firewall. I'll be surprised if it makes it through here. Eh, not bad, we're still going. And out into the reception hall. Oh, uh, we had a little breakup right there. Okay, that's through three walls, one of which is a firewall. So like we expected, this app is not going to get a real long range. You're only gonna get 
you know, a couple hundred feet line of sight and something like this, you're gonna get through one or two walls in probably about a hundred feet. Despite the range, the app is actually really useful for most cases if you only wanna have one transmitter or one device to power up. Usually any Wi-Fi signal is not going to reach more than a room or two away. Just think about your home Wi-Fi for your computer systems. You're basically going to be limited to that on any transmitter unless you have a receiver that has large antennas and a lot more power. So the Wi-Fi app range is really not that relevant because they're all going to be basically the same across the board for any transmitter system that you get. It is nice that it has it though. As far as battery life, they use about the same amount of power as any other transmitter. Sure, we could do a bunch of tests and show you how long it lasts, but different batteries that are different sizes are gonna provide different results. The reality is they work about like any other transmitter and they get a reasonable amount of battery life. And one thing I like about these that a lot of other transmitters also have is the ability to power them externally with different devices. And specifically in this case, USB-C. See earlier when we flew it on the Cinelifter, we wanted to power it off the LiPo battery that runs this drone. So for example, I can take, well, this is a much smaller LiPo, not gonna work with that, and put a little adapter on the balance leads plug it into the USB-C port, and you can do this with any five volt source, turn it on, and they power up off of a LiPo. So you can run these off of virtually anything, including cell phone chargers or other power banks that you might have laying around and power out from gimbals and cameras and things like that. Now that we have it powered up, another thing to point out is it does have a pretty intuitive little display with things like fan, auto, quiet. The fan's already pretty quiet, but you can turn it down even more, which is nice. And they advertise that it's in color, which is kind of cool that it has a color display. Honestly, don't really need that, but hey, it's the little details, so why not? Other than the color display, you have several other features, including multiple power options, which is the six to 19 volt DC, which is pretty standard anymore. Like I said, the USB-C, you have a little joystick on here that clicks in, which is tactile and feels really good. Plus, again, this is HDMI and SDI both. So you have both options and it does have the ability to break down one signal and turn it into the other. So you can put in SDI and output HDMI to your monitors. There are several other little specs and details that you can see on the website. We'll have links for the stuff down below, but those are some of the ones that really stand out to us. One of the main features they do point out is the 4K quality. And how does that 4K quality hold up? Spoiler, it's pretty good but it's not without its flaws. While most transmitters in this price range are only 1080p, these actually claim to have 4K transmission. That's pretty impressive. So to put that to the test, we have the camera out in the venue spinning around and we sent the signal to this 4K TV and you're looking through this new GoPro 11 on 5.3K and we're gonna just show you if there's any artifacts or issues at all with this. At first glance, this actually looks really sharp. Like the image looks really good and I have it rotating to show any artifacts or any kind of drop in bitrate because that's gonna be the first thing you notice with most transmitters is they can't handle a high bitrate. But if we start to get in really close on some of these chairs, you'll notice they kind of pulse a little bit. And that's the bitrate trying to keep up with that 4K transmission. It's not going to be perfect. So overall, that 4K quality is definitely sharper, but it's not necessarily something you're going to need. Because of the limited bitrate and bandwidth that you can actually transmit with these kind of systems, there is kind of an upper limit to quality, at least in this price range. So the 4K is nice, but it isn't necessarily a reason to go out and buy this system. As far as build quality and rigging, these things are very, very well built. They're like little tanks. It's made out of this like aluminum housing that is very durable looking. I haven't had any issues with it and I'm sure it dissipates a lot of the heat which allows for a quieter fan. And rigging, they do include one of these faceplate mounts that allows you to lay them flat, which is really nice to keep a lower profile with your setup. See, a lot of transmitters only have the screw on the bottom, which makes it like this. Or if you go to the Senna eyes, which I love these transmitters, but you're like <laughs> way up here. So that's a little bit awkward to the point that we actually had to make our own little custom 3D printed mount 
to make these a little more manageable to use. So I do like that they included this little front mounting plate. I kind of wish they included two, but the reality is you don't always need it. Another thing we're gonna talk about in a future video is the monitor that we used. This monitor actually has a powered NPF plate, which allows you to put the transmitter directly on and have a super compact setup. These being powered different ways is really useful and they're small and compact. They are actually about the perfect size for a medium to long range transmitter and much more convenient to rig than something that is substantially larger that may get you a couple hundred more feet that you probably won't need most of the time. So that brings us to our next point. Who are these transmitters for? Well, if you're just making YouTube videos, you probably don't need this. But if you have clients or directors looking over your shoulder that want a monitor that they can hold in their hands, these would be great. In the beginning, you could get by with using a cheaper transmitter and an app and a tablet, and that will work for a while, but eventually you're gonna need something a little bit larger. Also, if you need to pull focus, these are going to be better than your regular Wi-Fi transmitters. The latency is very low, especially if you use the included SDI. With HDMI, there is always going to be that additional lag, but it's not too bad. You can definitely pull focus for drama and kind of lightweight shots. You get into crazy action, you're gonna to have to pre-plan your movements a little bit. If you fly centilifters, I would say these really aren't for you. They would work, they did actually work, but they're not gonna be reliable enough and have the range you need. The reality is most of those transmitters are two to $3,000 for these things, unfortunately, to get the range you actually need. But at $700, I would say these are some of the best transmitters we've ever tested in that price range. Out of anything we currently own, these are gonna be our new go-to transmitters. We're gonna include links in the description where you can check these out for yourself and purchase them should you decide to. And I would love to hear your comments and thoughts on these versus other transmitters on the market. Personally, I think the Axun Sennai is gonna be the closest competitor to these but I think the size kind of makes them a little unnecessary for most cases. However, if you would like to see a review of those, we did make a video about them a while back and you can kind of see which is gonna be a better fit for you. For now, I think these are our go-to until our next tests. So thanks again and we'll see you in the next video.